Let's go catch some fish. probably heard the term like shooting from the hip this is more of like if i dropped the gun on the floor and as i was trying to pick it up it shot from my ankle uh this is totally on the fly i had nothing planned out i don't know where i'm sleeping i don't really know where i'm fishing other than this giant body of water that we're on but we're here to chase down a giant we're looking for giant redfish giant trout and giant black drum those are the three main things and we're gonna be here maybe a night maybe two nights we're gonna just try to camp and until we catch some good fish and we're gonna be sleeping in the boat the whole time we're not gonna be camping on the islands unless things get really bad and uh it's gonna drop about 15 to 20 degrees tonight so let's see if we can catch some fish beautiful redfish tailing right here that is over his back. That is such a bad cast. It's crazy. <laughs> that was the clearest redfish tailing I've ever seen in my life. I honestly wish I would have just picked up the camera instead of even casting at that fish. Holy cow, that was incredible. That was that was so cool. Beautiful blue lit up tail just fanning at the surface like that. Not exactly the size fish we're looking for right there. That is a speckled trout or a sea trout. Not actually a trout, a member of the drum family. So redfish, black drum, all that. And uh, he bit and I set the hook and he came flying out of the water. Sorry, bud. Always wet your hands before holding a trout, especially ones that little. I'm having a bit of a dilemma right now. So we're going to be boat camping. We're not going to be setting up on land. And the whole purpose for that was to basically maximize the amount of time that I have to fish. I don't need to pull up, find an island, find a campsite, make sure I'm allowed to camp on that island, uh, set up a tent, set up camping gear, set up a fire, this and that. This is like a fishing trip. I want to catch a giant redfish or a giant black drum or a giant trout. That's what we're here for. But the reality of the situation is, no matter what, I need to eventually set up camp and it's easier to do it while it's light out. And I bet we only have 10, 15 more minutes of light, but I haven't caught a big fish yet, or even really a fish besides that tiny trout tonight. And I'm itching to catch something good. What can do? We're gonna get set up here and get anchored while it's still light out to make sure we're holding well. Kind of get my uh, sleeping bag and what I need out before it's dark. And then we can fish from anchor and fish in the dark. And that could actually be pretty cool. I also need to eat some food. I have not really eaten anything today. The more line you have out, the easier it is for your anchor to set, but we're also in two feet of water, so we need, <laughs> it's gonna kind of drag a little bit. So we let as much as we can, and we're gonna see if we can snag. And then I have a mud anchor for the backside to stop our boat from swinging around throughout the entire night. And I've positioned myself where I'm about 50 yards off the bank. It's gonna be cold and windy tonight, so there probably won't be any bugs, but I want protection from the wind from the bank, but I don't wanna be so close that bugs and whatever can come off of the trees and get after me. We need to grab our mud anchor. Dude, it doesn't get much better than this, does it, man? Camping out on the boat, beautiful night. I'm hoping I can get away with only setting up my sleeping bag and an air mattress and not even have to do like a tarp or the tent. Uh, I gotta check the weather though and see if we're getting any precipitation here because we're gonna get smoked by a cold front. It says zero. It says zero precipitation. But we also live in Florida and that almost means absolutely nothing. But it says absolutely nothing's gonna happen. So we're gonna risk it and maybe we'll wake up in the middle of the night getting rained on in 58 degree weather, but we'll be okay. Maybe. <laughs> We're about to make like the simplest meal. This isn't even what I had planned for the idea of this. We have a little micro greens mix here. Garlic, herb, goat cheese, 
salami, man. Holy cow. This is just unbelievable. Camera doesn't even do it justice, man. Absolute fire in the sky. I'm sure if I looked real hard, I'd probably see some redfish tails flicking around out there. Maybe a big old black drum. But hopefully they'll be waiting for us in the morning, right? You know, I, I planned on originally busting out the grill tonight and cooking up that uh, red meat that I brought. But I don't think we really have time to do all that right now. So we'll probably do that for lunch or dinner tomorrow. We'll do the chorizo for breakfast. Me a sicko. I love goat cheese. It is so good. <laughs> Looks a little rough right now. We'll mix it up and it'll look pretty. <sighs> How good is living, man? Nothing like eating <laughs> what's almost a fancy meal of like microgreens and goat cheese and <laughs> select meat. And this is all from like a small local market and stuff like that. And eating with a spork <laughs> in a boat. <laughs> That'll do, baby. That'll do. We're gonna have to like semi multitask here with the light. I'm gonna blow up my uh, air mattress. You're probably asking yourself, Lawson, where are you gonna put the air mattress in your sleeping bag and everything in your skiff? I too am asking that question right now. And I don't know. I'm thinking we might move this cooler a little bit to the side and we can actually sleep perfectly right along the inside of the port gunnel. Like I think that'll be actually really nice. We'll get our air pad blown up here and then we'll get our sleeping bag and cross our fingers that we don't get rained on tonight. And um, it's kind of one of those weird things where it's not that cold right now. Like it's probably like 74 degrees. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing sweatpants and a uh, jacket, but I brought them with me because in the middle of the night, it's going to get down to like 58. So we'll see. Got some things tucked away. It's time to enjoy our, our salad here. This thing is actually like insanely good for the little amount of effort that it took to put in this. This good ingredients, like high quality ingredients go a very long way. And uh, but try and take care of my health a little better. Not that salami and goat cheese is like the staple of health, but you know, it beats eating, you know, burgers and fried food and all that stuff. And these are good, good ingredients, man. I may seem grossly underprepared for this, which is true, <laughs> but you know how you make up for lack of preparation? Just being tough and saying, well, it's going to be in the 50s tonight. And look, I know that's not that cold for a lot of people. I've lived in Florida my whole life. We're in Florida. 58 degrees might as well be negative 10. Um, but we're going to be all right. We got a sleeping bag. Don't really feel like throwing up the tarp and we're just going to air quotes, tough it out. I mean, if you call this tough, it looks like I'm literally sitting at like the feet of heaven right now. Beauty, beauty, mate. Sometimes the simple things in life are where it's at. Would it be nice to pull up onto an island and set up a luxurious camp and stuff like that? Yeah, but uh, I am more focused on trying to catch some big fish and uh we got this boat with the space in it for one so why not camp in it you know hey, this is just like unbelievable man it's so amazing out here i can feel the cold front starting to hit right now the wind's picked up by you know five to eight miles per hour and the temperatures already dropped like probably four or five degrees hope we sleep well tonight it can be tough sleeping sometimes when you're out by yourself but the more you do it the more you get used to it I've been eating this entire thing in the dark and didn't even realize there was a freaking silica packet in my salad. <laughs> I don't really know what to do with myself here because it's weird camping on a boat. I'm not going to have a fire, which normally, you know, when you're camping, you got time to kill in the night, you set up a fire. And it may look like it's darker than heck, but I mean, 
It is, but it's only six o'clock right now. So I got some time to kill. I don't have any service and I forgot to bring a book. I was gonna bring my Bible with me. Forgot it. <laughs> so I guess uh, I'm gonna sit here and stretch on the front of the boat. I actually cannot believe how comfortable this is. I'm just laying down here on top of the air mattress, inside the sleeping bag, got my pillow. This might be the most comfortable I've ever been like laying down camping before. It is primo. It also, it also helps that it's like 65 degrees right now and feels perfect out, but it's gonna get a little cold during the night, but it's only 7.30 and I'm just laying down and I guess we're gonna sleep. Don't really have much else to do, so we're gonna snooze, man. We'll catch you in the morning. I would pay a large sum of money for hot coffee right now, but I didn't bring any to make or anything like that. I just didn't think about it. Just easier to stop at the gas station and grab uh, two cans of cold brew instead of having to bring a whole setup to make coffee in the boat. All right. Slept pretty decently last night, man, all things considered. It's crazy actually how much sleeping inside the cockpit of the boat down there cuts out the wind and kept me pretty warm. I didn't even wear a jacket last night. I ended up just wearing my fishing shirt that I was in and pants and wrapped up in a sleeping bag and slept really well. Woke up, you know, every once in a while, but it's pretty standard camping. I, if someone can sleep through the entire night while camping, they are a psychopath. I don't know how you can do it. So we got like 45 minutes, an hour till sunrise. So we're gonna slowly just take our time wrap up all of our camping gear and get it tucked back away in the bag and get ready to fish, man. I was just kind of sitting here admiring this collection of ibis that are roosted up in a dead tree over here. It's like a dead white mangrove. And as I'm sitting there looking at them, one of them kind of flies and hops around and just an enormous head wake moved from underneath the tree in the water. As much as I don't want to, you know, blow these off the roost, we're gonna see if we can get close and make a few casts. Oh my gosh, look at that head wake. That's something chasing the mullet. Fish. Oh, I think that might be a, no, it's a red, just very silver. Oh, that was sweet. Yes. We crept up on those things, man. I mean, I'm freaking fearful to know how big the one that swam off that way was because that thing was making about triple the head weight that this one is, and this is a decent sized redfish. Awesome. Just saw his head wake slowly moving along these branches up here, right against the bank. Beauty. That's what we're here for. Oh, lit up too, man. Absolutely beautiful redfish right there. Not the giant we're looking for. I bet he'd be like 22 inches long or something, but un believable and right before I pulled him out of the water his tail was lit up so vibrant blue it's faded now but whoo first good fish of the trip and it's early early in the morning 
And there might be a few more of these guys hanging around, but we're really hoping to connect with a giant. But this is a great, great start. Thank you, buddy. All right, it is time to cook up some breakfast here that Chorizo has been calling my name sitting in the cooler back there. Now I have something really cool that I'm excited to try out. This is called the Scotty, and they were nice enough to sponsor this video and send this over to me. It's actually a German company that makes a portable grill. And the idea behind it was the owner of the company loves to fish and be outdoors. And I guess it's illegal to have open fires in Germany. And also where we're at right now, you know, we're surrounded by woods. But it's illegal to harvest wood from any of these islands around here because they're rookeries for all of the native birds. So we have a grill here that we're going to set up. And this thing literally packs into a flat bag like that. And that was in my backpack with all my camping gear. We're going to bust this open, get set up. Cook up some chorizo and you're about to watch a grown man eat a pound of chorizo by himself in a boat. That is freaking sick. You know, roll up a few poblanos inside some of this ground here. And I mean, we're camping it, we're doing minimalist. I could add flour, which I actually have some flour with me, but we're not worried about that right now. And we'll just throw some rough shaped patties on here just to do this a little quicker. Good ingredients go a long way. And that's what we got here. This is uh, from a Florida farm, fresh, like small farm chorizo. All right, I decided to stop being an idiot and I took my grill over to some dry land after possibly scalding my Yeti cooler. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Setting a hot grill on top of a piece of plastic, it kind of burnt. I'm not sure what <laughs> went wrong there. So we got our chorizo patties cooking on the Scotty grill right now. And they shouldn't take very long now that we're on a uh, proper surface, have them set over in the sand. Once they're done cooking, we're going to chow down and uh, start looking for some big fish. And it's kind of perfect because we're letting some of the clouds burn off, the sun's starting to come up, so we can really try to see if we can sight cast some big red fish or big black drum here. Finally time to eat. Got our little chorizo platter here. Now this is uh, appearance wise, like maybe a two out of 10, a one out of 10. 
It's really not that bad, just rough form patties with some poblanos cut in. There's so much flavoring and seasoning already in chorizo pre-mix. Ironically, I was just trying to be stubborn and I didn't feel like getting out of my boat and finding somewhere to set up the grill. And I don't know why I thought setting it on top of the Yeti cooler would be an okay idea. And the second we got on the land, it was like easy as cake and the grill was the easiest part of the whole thing. The hard part was me just being an idiot. And uh, truth is, it's hard to find the usable shoreline here. There's really not very much like at all. And that is why I did the camping in the boat overnight because we could actually, oh my gosh, there's just, now it's two times in the past minute I've seen a shrimp get fired out of the water by what must be a redfish. That's exciting. So we're gonna scarf down our trees. Man, that is so good. Holy cow. We're gonna scarf down chorizos and bell pepper while the grill cools off. Then we're gonna get the grill wrapped up and put away and get the boat organized and get back to catching giant fish. I will say, you know, it took longer than it should have just because it was my first time using the grill and I had to find somewhere to camp or somewhere to set up the grill. But stopping and eating some actual breakfast out on the water after camping, opposed to a lot of times what I'll do is eat like protein bars or just like beef jerky. This is. This is what my heart and mind needed, and I'm gonna be ready to hammer them in. This could win an award for the ugliest meal that tastes like a five-star meal. So good. I just ate like a pound and a half of chorizo and a whole poblano pepper. I feel like I could rip a hole through a wall right now. All right, we're gonna get the grill wrapped up, get the boat tidied up, go catch some big fish. We are fueled for it, baby. Time to break down Scotty here and get going. This is the best camping grill I've ever used. Uh, this video is sponsored by them and they were nice enough to send me one but they didn't tell me a spiel and didn't tell me to be like, this thing is, oh, it has blah, blah, blah. They just wanted me to use it and talk about it. And this is hands down the best camping grill I've ever used. I have used like, you know, little butane burners. Um, I've used like the Coleman setup grills. This thing is so easy. The fact that it packs down into my bag that I could then slide into a backpack. I don't have to bring a big hard case. And then the little burners, you can't really cook anything in them except for basically instant meals, like MREs. This is awesome. This is a really, really great product. I will leave a link down below if you guys want to pick one up. And I'm also going to give one away. So make sure you uh, like, subscribe to the video, and leave a comment down below. And I'll choose a random person because Scotty also sent me an extra grill to give away to you guys, which is pretty cool. So we're going to get this packed up. Couldn't recommend this thing more, honestly. And uh, we're going to go catch some big freaking fish. We've uh, kind of creeped our way into a really nice little pocket here where the wind is completely laid down, which is saying something because it's blowing like 18 out on the main part of the river. And I think I saw a tail flick way back in there. We got our vortex binos right here. This has been extremely disappointing so far. You know, I'm seeing some redfish here and there. I caught a redfish, but none of them of any giant size. And I'm really looking for a fish that's big. And I don't know if it's the area, I don't know if it's the weather, but I haven't seen any big fish. I've only, like the biggest fish I've probably seen has been like 27 inches. So we're gonna have to make a move here. The difference between the water here and the water that we've been fishing is unbelievable. You can actually see all the way up to the bank and can really, really put some cast in at some fish if we find them. There's a redfish. 
crick. Quite a few of them, like three or four of them. It's like the first actual school of them I've seen all day, it feels like. I kind of hit pause for a second and really took some time to think about what's going to work to catch these fish. Well, it was clear where I started, but it's already gotten pretty dirty back in here. And there's clearly a lot of fish. I've seen five redfish in a 20 foot spike circle already. But they're being skittish, which redfish are known to be. And uh, I'm having a hard time getting seeing them before I really ever get a chance to cast at them. And so we're going to work through here painfully slow. Like really, really slow. And this is a weightless gulp shrimp. And we are going to literally just slowly, slowly bounce this bad boy right around through this thing and just make long cast and drag it around. Redfish right there. Nice! That is literally the third cast I've made with this thing. Ooh. Wow, that worked quick. But to be fair, that was like the first one I've actually been able to sight cast in a long time. Oh, yes. All right. Decent size red. I think about the same size as the one we caught this morning. He's dragging me all around this area. I'm kind of wanting to stick him so he doesn't spook all the other fish in here. It's a good fish, especially for the setup. It's a 2,000 size reel, 10 pound braid. I got 25 pound leader on here though. And I just took some time, and sometimes then that's like the key, is just taking some time to think about what you need to do. And I was like, really just had to sit down and analyze, like, all right, what's the bait that needs to be thrown right now? Like, what should I be throwing? And it paid off within three casts. Beautiful fish, man. Oh my gosh, an enormous headway coming at us. I just want to stand up and see what it is. It's got to be a giant. I'm gonna bring him around the other side of the boat. Beautiful red. I think he's a bit bigger than our first one we caught today. Awesome, awesome fish, man. You can get in a sight cast, there's nothing cooler than that. And he's even got a mark on this side over here. I'll have to show it off in a second where it looks like maybe a dolphin grabbed him at some point or something. You can see two teeth mark sets on each side of him. Looks like a dolphin had him, but. You got a second chance at life. Beautiful fish, man. Some of the brighter blues I've seen on a tail in a long time, man. You mind your manners up there, sir. All right. We reset, re-rigged. Oh my gosh, I see a fin of fins. Mega tailor. I don't know if that's a redfish or if that is a black drum, but it is a big tail sticking out of the water. Dude, I think it's a giant redfish. He's kind of working towards me, so this could work rope. Ooh, he just flicked a little bit there. Hope that didn't. He's back up. Definitely two, at least two of them. I'm like shooting into the sun so you can't really see them. Fortunately we're approaching these fish directly into the sun. So I know it's not like ideal camera angle here. But there is three tailors. One of which looks very, very big. We're on speed of one. And we're just creeping in. It's incredible. I can't decide if I want to film these more, if I want to try to catch them more. I would really love to get some cool shots of these things. Every once in a while they flick all of a sudden really aggressively and I think that's them eating something. <laughs> I don't think they even noticed. That was about a foot to the right of them. I'm really tempted to grab my camera. Alright, 
I'll have more chances to catch redfish. I want to film these things tailing and show you guys because there's like five or six of them tailing out here now. We have to walk so quietly. We're really risking not catching these fish by doing this, but this is so cool. There he is. There's a couple of them. There's at least two or three right there. And in front of me, there's like five or six actually. Those just popped up, like just now, all these in front of me. There's a really big one, it looks like, out in front of me right there somewhere. He disappeared. Or this one has just been non-stop. That is so freaking cool, man. That is so freaking cool. And every once in a while, you'll see like this aggressive pop on the surface. And that's them eating something they found digging around in the mud, I believe. You can catch one of these things. Oh man, I actually think these are two. There's two closer to me right here too. That fish is crazy. I'm like afraid to get two on top of them, but they are so head down into the mud right now that I don't even think they'll notice unless I like bring it across their snout. Dude, there's one in this three threesome right here that's really big. So I have two right here. There's about three or four out there and there's three right here. Those are the original ones I saw. And one of them in the three is really big. We're just gonna shoot this like right in them. Screw it. I'm going to have to drop this in its mouth for them to notice, I think. Water's really dirty. Probably 15, 20 redfish across this flat now that I just see tailing. But so you know there's even more that you don't see. Like, I have a few that are all even closer casting distance than that one. But that one looks sizably different than all the other ones. That might do it. So on them, I can't believe they're not eating it. That is on that one's head. He's either gonna spook or eat this one. Yeah, that's gotta be it right there. Unbelievable. Like, I feel like I'm almost gonna have to literally drag my line through these fish to get them to eat it. Like that was like five inches to the right of them maybe. It's literally on their heads. Oh my gosh. Huge wake. I don't know if that spooked them or if that got them fired up. I've casted that same group of fish like 10 times and that was the first time they finally showed any type of reaction. And I think they didn't like spook but they swirled around and then kind of shimmied left and right. Another group of tailors right in front of me. Can't quite tell how big these ones are but... This one, this whole flat's gonna erupt though, unfortunately. I might try to stick them pretty good. I don't think this is a giant, giant one. It's another good one though, but I wanna stick them pretty good so we don't blow up the entire flat. I mean, it's bigger than the other two I've been catching. Oh, that is beautiful music to my ears. Man, I, I tell you what, 
that one I could see that I was throwing at for a while that didn't eat was just, he was built different. Like, way bigger tail than any of the other ones I was seeing across the flat. Like, this is still a good fish right here. But I think the one I was sitting there looking at was a upper, like, 35 plus to 40 inch fish. This is a thick one. Really beautiful. This is, I mean, I don't know if fishing gets much cooler than this, man. Camping, out in the boat, stocking fish. I think fishing for redfish is one of the closest things you can get to hunting, really, of like spot and stock hunting. Ooh. It's a good, good one, man. He's trying to get under the boat. Oh, absolute beauty. Whew. 100% the biggest one so far. I bet this one goes 25, 26. Beautiful, beautiful redfish right there, man. And there is more tailors about. Unbelievable trip so far. Three nice quality reds. We're still looking for that giant though. But look at that fish, man. That tail, got the blues. We're gonna get a nice good release on them. The good thing is the water's so cold and nice that these fish are just absolutely booming. How was school today? How was how was school? How was school? How was school? Did you have fun at school? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> we have hopped over to the other side of the river on the wind laid down side. And we're gonna see if we can whack a big trout or a big red over yonder over here. I think I'm gonna go home tonight. <laughs> Uh, I miss my, my wife and kids. <laughs> I'm, I know I'm a sucker, but I mean, it's been so fun and enjoyable being out here. And this has just been like so great to catch some good redfish and just be out of doors. But gosh, man, you become a sucker when you start having kids. I got a two and a half year old and a four month old at home. And I was going to go home before my wife even FaceTimed me, but she just FaceTimed me and I was talking to them. And I want to be able to be home in the morning for them. So we are gonna fish a little bit see if we can whack that giant so we got like two hours oh right bumping that swim bait across the flat awesome whoo this thing is ripping i don't know if this is a big fish or if this is just a fired up fish holy mackerel i was just feathering this paddle tail above the, the grass on the flat back there all right it, I don't, I don't know if this fish has got the eye of the tiger or if this is a big one. It's hard to tell. He's putting off good weight, but we're, we're in a shallow area, so he kind of had to just hit the road and start running here. I really haven't got a super good look at it. Oh, the snook. <laughs> no wonder it feels so differently. Look at the snook. It's not a snook, it's a huge trout. It's a snook. All right, I was wondering, man, that thing took off way faster and harder than a redfish did. Don't see these very often where we're at right now. We're, we're about, and the snook keep getting further and further, but we're pretty far north on a snook's range right now. But I love seeing my good friend. It's not a bad one. All things considered where we're at, definitely not a bad one. Catch them a bit bigger down south, but that is a beautiful, healthy looking snook right there. And it was 50, uh, what, 56 degrees this morning, and we're catching snook in the evening. Isn't that funny?
Oh, Ooh, trouty. Right there off the edge of this island. I was legitimately just about to pull up the engine to leave. Ooh, he choked that thing too. We'll have to make sure we get a good unhooking on him. Actual respectable sea trout, not like the little micro when we caught our first night. A beautiful speckled trout right there. Probably only like 14, 15 inches, which is the legal limit to keep, but we're going to let him go. Awesome, awesome fish. If you heard me say you want to wet your hands and you hold trout, they can be a little more sensitive than their cousins, the redfish and black drum. They have really fine scales and a really thick slime coat. So if you grab them with a uh, unwetted hand, it'll just kind of really rough them up a bit. You want to treat them well. I was literally sitting here leaning down to retie, and uh, as I lean down to open up my hatch, I look forward and I see a tail flicking around in the water up here. They're about 10 yards in front of where I just casted. I think I'm gonna take a second, and walk very slowly, and put on something weedless and something that sinks to optimize my chance of catching one of these fish here. Cause I don't wanna throw a paddle tail up in there on a jig head and just end up getting snagged and getting caught up in weed and miss my opportunity. So oh, there it is. Oh that I reeled right to the middle of all of them on that one. We're getting more and more aggressive with our uh, sight casting on these fish as the day goes on. Ooh, that was sweet. These, this is a, uh, these were all pretty small, and this is a pumpkin orange redfish with a vibrant blue tail. Unbelievably beautiful. Holy moly. That was about a school, about five or six of them all around this size here. But what an incredibly pretty fish this one is. Smallest fish so far. Absolute stunner, though. Super beautiful blue line. The orangest fish that we've caught. That is amazing. All right, let's get him back in the water. My GoPro died as I set the hook into this one. I guess if there's any fish that uh, I wouldn't mind missing the hook set on this trip, it was this one right here. <laughs> Little ratty. There is like hundreds of redfish across this grass flat right now. I just spooked a school of probably like 40. We gotta, we gotta catch them. Fish, that was a giant fish. This is the original fish I was looking at when I put a good lead on him. This too might be pretty big. God, oh, it's coming at me so fast. That is not. Okay, there is multiple things going on there. Holy freaking cow. There's a very big fish came up right next to the boat and looked at my lure. Then there was a secondary group of headwake, which I think was a group of a few fish. But the one fish that came up was just one singular really big red. Then there was a school going the other way of multiple small fish. Those tails, so cool, man. Oh, I feel like we're so close to catching a giant. I mean, we've caught so many fish, and it's been awesome. 
sight casting redfish and seeing tailors and it's just been unbelievable. That, that giant eluded us. And I want to get back to the ramp before dark and I still have a couple miles to run. Oh, dang, man. Well, it's been fun. Let's get out of here. Car's still there, all right. <laughs>